Hello, I'm ABX Toycat, and welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be talking about hitboxes and collision boxes in Minecraft. These are two terms you might not have heard before, but yet you use them every single day in Minecraft, whether you know it or not. Uh, whether it's placing blocks, whether it's interacting with mobs, or whether it's fighting other players, these are two useful concepts to know about because by learning how to manipulate them, you can make you know your uh, experience a bit more favorable, and it's something useful to know about at the very least, just because it's kind of interesting. So that's why I'm going to be talking about it in today's video. Please do like it if you do like it because it helps out the channel a lot, and lets me do like it, and we'll see more kind of complex topics like this. But let's get straight into it really, shall we? So let's start by talking about exactly what a hitbox is. That's the term you've probably heard about before from other video games. In the context of Minecraft, it's quite easy to explain. You know the uh, black kind of box you see around objects? That is a hitbox. So that, you know, defines where you're going to hit. If you see, um, if we go to a lever, for instance, you can see it's slightly larger than the lever because the hitbox is usually square-ish in Minecraft. If we go to a torch, it's slightly larger than the torch. Stuff like that. The hitbox is where you're going to hit when you hit the right trigger. If the black box is around the torch, I'm always going to hit the torch, even if I'm slightly off the torch like this. As you can see, we break the torch. And yeah, that works for every single item in the game. When you see a black box on something, that means you're going to hit that. that. And so yeah, that's that. It works for mobs, uh, though they don't have a black box. And it also works for players, although again, they have slightly fuzzy hitboxes. But just bear that in mind, hitboxes are what you're about to hit, and they just basically define what's going to be there. So this is slightly separate to the player character, because it can be in a place, but just bear that in mind. And second of all, we've got the collision box, which just defines when you can't keep running into something. So uh, for instance, a pumpkin being above my head stops me from being able to jump that high. Uh, this fence being in front of me stops me from being able to just run through it. And um, you know, the, the hitbox on uh, certain things will stop you falling off objects, so the hitbox on the brewing stand, so, oh, sorry, the collision box on the brewing stand stops you from falling off uh, when I'm over here, even though I probably should fall off, right? But yeah, that's how hit, uh, that's how collision boxes work. As long as you're on the collision box, you can't fall off something. As long as there's a collision box in front of you, you can't run past it. And as long as there's one above you, you can't jump into it. So why is all of that ne necessary to explain? Because you might be like, okay, that's cool, no, but if it's just the same as a block, why can't I just keep on going on thinking, yeah, that's a pumpkin, I can't jump into that, I can hit that if I try and punch it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So the reason you need to bear all of this stuff in mind is not just because oh well you know that that it helps you know the, how the way the game works but it's also useful because the hitboxes and the collision box of objects aren't always aligned with the way the objects actually work so for instance if you look at this fence right here the in-game model of the fence is this kind of uh, you know one block tall fence and the hitbox is also slightly different to the model because you can see uh, even down here we're punching the fence even though there's nothing there and then the collision box is separate to both of these two things because the collision box is one and a half blocks tall which is why you can't jump over a fence because even though the fence is one block tall as a model and as a hitbox, the collision box is separate and it stops you from jumping over it, even though you can jump one block high gaps. So if we had a block there, it'd be the exact same height, it'd have the exact same uh, you know hitbox, but yet we wouldn't be able to jump over it because, oh, we would be able to jump over that because the collision box for a regular block is one block tall, the collision box for a fence is one and a half blocks tall. So yeah, that's the easiest way to explain both those in one sentence, but let's start explaining how this can be cool because there's quite a few block examples of you know blocks that have really weird hitboxes that don't align with you know the way the block looks in some really weird ways that can be confusing. So the first easy one is redstone. You might think you have to punch some of the actual red paste on the floor to pay up, get it up. But if you look here, you can see when I'm on the block, it just has the whole block highlighted, which means if I just punch there, it gets rid of the redstone, the same as if I punch directly on the redstone. That's how just that, that's just how the thing works. So even if I go to the very edge over here, still going to work. So yeah, hitboxes always work that way by looking at the grey box where you punch. You can use this to uh, your advantage in quite a few places. But there's also a few places where it just seems weird. So the lever, for instance, some of the lever sticks out the hitbox. You can see, even if I'm pressing right here, I'm not actually pressing anything. But if I press over here where there's nothing, I'm going to press the lever. Very, very bizarre, very, very weird. And um, there's a few other examples in the form of the uh, the brewing stand, which again, even though it's this very weird shape, because hitboxes presumably, at least it looks this way, have to be a, a square shape. They just decide to make the base the only place we'll part, which means if you try and place a brewing stand right there, as you see, it goes up there instead of over here for some reason. Very, very bizarre, but it's just what you need to bear in mind. If you want to place on the side of a brewing stand, it's actually really tricky because you have to kind of place the object right there on this tiny little side. So placing a brewing stand sideways from each other is possible, but it's a lot trickier because of the hitbox. So yeah, that's how, um, you know, knowing the hitboxes actually can be quite handy to you. So um, the last case I have here is actually another one of these, like, the hitbox and the collision box is different because the um you know, if you look at the piston right here, you can see the actual, uh, you know, the block, the hitbox itself is just showing off this thing here. If I try and punch through that, I'm going to punch straight through to the block there. I can even punch down to there. But yet the collision box is different yet to just being this and being this because the collision box is the entire block right here. So it's another one of these cases where the hitbox, the collision box, and the model are entirely different. And it's something worth bearing in mind because although it doesn't make any sense that I'm floating above nothing right now, I'm so far away from any other blocks. But because the, you know, the collision box of the piston goes all the way out to here, it means I can stand just fine. I can jump 
jump and uh, as little sense as it's making I'm just floating in the air because the collision box is wider than that. I don't know why on the, uh, the piston for instance it has to be this wide but there are a lot of decisions where they made stuff like this. If you go look in the game now you'll notice a lot of uh, you know collision models and hit models are very different to the blocks and it's just something to bear in mind. Always pay attention to the grey uh, gray square when you hang things and always pay attention to how some blocks actually let you jump on bits of the blocks that don't really make too much sense to jump on. So yeah very interesting little thing you might not have known about and that is that right there. So uh, let's talk about how it can be used for mobs because for mobs it's oh also um actually one more thing I want to say about blocks uh, before I leave it is uh, the barrier block is another interesting example of how the you know the, the collision model and the uh, the hitbox are the exact same but yet there is no block model there so even though um you know you you should be able to go through in your eyes because you can't see anything there's the invisible hitbox and there's the invisible um collision uh, box which is how that whole thing works so yeah let's move on to mobs mobs are an easy thing to talk about mobs have very good collision boxes and hitboxes in Minecraft as I'm sure you've noticed if you played the game. Uh, if you have a really laggy connection, you'll notice that gets bad. And if you're fighting Iron Golems, because they're the biggest mob, and when they're at speed, they can sometimes have some errors, you might run into some issues there. But for the most part, mobs, there's not too much you can do with that. You know about their hitboxes, you can know I'm hitting them right now. Uh, you can know that because their hitbox seems to be slightly wider than their model, at least in my experience, that means you can hit them slightly from the side. You might not have thought of before. You might think this crosshair has to be perfectly aligned on them. Nope, the crosshair can be slightly to the left, slightly to the right, because the hitbox thing. And yeah, that's mobs right there. Kind of interesting but not quite as interesting as the player uh, hitbox so again this is a th the player hitbox you know like me right now is affected a lot by the uh, you know the, by the connection if you're in a really bad game connection that's sometimes you'll notice you have to hit from behind people that's why you'll notice sometimes when you know like if you get someone really laggy and they're next up to you if you try and hit them it's not going to work because their hitbox can sometimes move their connection so that way you can't hit them where they're not but sometimes their player model can't move as fast it's a very very bizarre you know case of networking and you'll notice this a lot in first person shooter games as well but another really interesting uh, situation here is the fact that the hitbox um, you know for the player never changes but yet the character model can and you can use this to some interesting ways so the first thing a lot of people think when they look at the uh, Doctor Who skin pack is it Doctor Who or is it Star Wars? It's Star Wars. It, <laughs> it, a lot of people uh, think when they... Uh, actually, it's true of the Doctor Who one too, though. Because if you look at Doctor Who, there's like Daleks and stuff. Uh, a lot of uh, skins recently in Minecraft console, especially the licensed skins, interesting enough, uh, actually have really, really big skins. Look at this Dalek. This is not a, you know, a Steve-sized character. And as a result of this, you can do some kind of interesting things. And you know, the first thing everyone thinks is like, okay, well, look at this skin right here. The Wicket W Warwick. Look at this. Well, just, just look at us. We're like, we're tiny. Now we're going to be really hard to hit because people have to hit this tiny bit down here. However, your you know your your collision box and your hitbox remain the same. To prove both those things, you know here I am right now. I can't go under here, no matter how hard I try, because my actual model is still the same as the Steve model. Even even though I, you know I went into a cat, I went into this thing. I'm still got the exact same Steve models when I try and hit here. It does this weird thing where it zooms in because that's where my face is right now. So that's that right there. And to prove it just over here. If I try and jump up, it won't let me because that's where the top of my head is. The rest of your pixels, uh, the ones you can't see, have just gone invisible. And also these arms uh, don't actually exist. So in this case, you can use it to your advantage because you're less visible than your model but people can also use that against you because you might think you're invisible but they can hit the invisible part of you that you know you might not have figured so that's an interesting thing there but interestingly you can also use it the reverse way because you might think a skin like this is terrible because look how much a uh, bigger hitbox i am but because the hitbox is the same you know it's the same steve one down there it means people might be trying to hit you where you, they can't hit you like you know look at this helmet compared up oh, sorry look at yeah you can't even see my helmet because it's just that big if they try and hit, uh, if they try and hit this at uh, this very top of the head here, what's going to happen is it's just not going to work. It, they're going to hit through it, and that means if you have a big enough skin like this one, which is from the Star Wars classic pack, um, th if you have this uh, massive skin right here, then you've got a slight advantage because your hitbox doesn't necessarily align with you. And if you can trick people into hitting your head or hitting your larger than average arms, then basically you can make it so that you know they're not actually going to be able to do some stuff. So that's something interesting and worth bearing in mind right there. Uh, your hitbox stays the same regardless of that stuff, and it varies on connection, but doesn't vary based on skin, which means you can have a larger skin to make yourself harder, uh, make yourself, uh, you know, like harder to hit technically because they'll be trying to hit parts of you that don't exist. Or, you know, you can go like this so that some of you are invisible and that might make you hard to hit. It's entirely a decision, but there is technically a slight PvP advantage and disadvantage to the smaller and the bigger skins. Something interesting that's a console exclusive because on the PC, I think Alex has smaller arms and I think that is actually her model changing. So again, that's actually, that's another interesting uh, point worth making. I believe even the, uh, you know, Alex actually has a very slightly different model to Steve. Uh, it's it's uh, I, it's it's such a minute difference that testing it makes it hard to tell. But just something worth bearing in mind. If you want to be uh, you know Alex, then you have thinner arms and it has the same thing. It's only a tiny little thing on the PC, but that's something worth bearing in mind. Same same for the box edition, same for all these things. That's that right there. So yeah, uh, hitboxes and collision boxes are a very complex subject. For the most part, you need to just know that they exist so you can know when something works one way for some weird reason. So you can know, for instance, why barrier blocks can block you when they don't exist. So you can know why pistons have a different collision box and a different hitbox to their model. And just so you 
you can know why all these things work the way they do. Uh, there's a lot more examples than ones I've showed. I just think these are some of the most effective ones um, because a lot of them are minor. Like, you know, the torch, for instance, it's a very small difference, but it is still enough that you can kind of punch a little bit off the torch. Like, um, if we go like this a little bit there we go you know stuff like that it's minor but it's noticeable and there's just a lot of these things in the game and yeah that's uh hitbox and sleeve boxes i hope you did all enjoy the video if you did like it please do like it and let me know share if you really likes it and subscribe if you're new around here i make videos like this every single day on my channel and if you subscribe you'll see them daily on your homepage. let me know if you like these this slightly more technical video i know we went over something that's kind of you know a little bit more complex than what i usually do let me know if you did like that with the comments down below and other than that uh i guess i'll see you all in the next video thank you all very much for watching Follow our IBX Toy Cat and goodbye.